Hey folks, Bridges here. I'm making this video as a quick tutorial review, honestly, to show how to create that exploded view drawing that we all like to see. So um, we're starting off, I'm actually going to talk about something else leading up to it, and that is um, sub-assemblies. So what we're looking at here is an assembly, and you can tell that it's an assembly from right here. You've got your three little cubes stacked together. Um, and that is, a, it's a, um, what we've dealt with so far is it's, it's three or, or it's, it's several components that are assembled together using joints of some sort. Well, if you look down here, we're actually not putting components together. It looks like we've got three different assemblies joined together to create a larger assembly. Okay, this is called your top level assembly, and these are called sub assemblies. And just like with anything, you can click on the little side arrow to make it expand out. So, for example, the um, the pin barrel subassembly, which is this one here, it has multiple parts assembled together, and I can expand that to show all of its. Well, look there, there's more little subassemblies in here. So this is a multi-layer, a multi-level assembly. Okay, so we'll turn off all these assemblies as well. And we'll just get down just to one or two, okay? And what we'll focus on here is um, we're going to go with the black ink cartridge. That's the one we're going to show. And that's, that is, okay, so we're looking at this sub-assembly of the, um, what is this, the, the black ink cartridge. And we can expand that as well, and we can see that at its most basic level, it is three components, the plastic barrel, the ballpoint end, and the color selector. So I'm going to go ahead and open up okay, the sub-assembly of uh, the black ink cartridge. Okay? And, and here it is. Well, currently, just pretend like you didn't see that. It opens up like this, and this is the way that we've uh, learned to join things together using the joints. Okay, this happens to be rigid joints, so rigid between here and here, and then rigid between here and there. And because of that, nothing is able to move around in, relative, in relation to another part. So what we want to do, if we were to go and make a drawing of this, it would be a new drawing from design. And we've done that a million times already, haven't we? Great. That's not exactly what I want to do, okay? That's not exactly what I want. I want that, but I want it exploded out. So we actually don't want to be in this new drawing from design. So I'm going to exit that. Instead, I want to do something a little different. We're going to go new drawing from animation. Well, what is this animation? Well, since we haven't made an animation yet, okay, it wants us to to do that and that's why it brings us to this animation tab which is it could just be toggled we can just go from design to animation okay and by the way I actually already had made an animation which is why this is on the screen right now okay but now okay this is what will show up for you you're gonna you're gonna see this new animation with it's, it just looks like our design but the way that it's animated is we're going to start disassembling things and taking it apart. Basically reverse engineering it. So we're going to use this transform arrow right here, this transform components. And because this is made up of three different components, we can actually move them away by clicking on them and then using this translation arrow this way. Now that's nice, but I really like to leave that trail line visibility. So let's click to toggle that on. And we'll say OK. And then we'll do the same thing for we'll zoom out a bit and do the same thing for the other part. There's a little, a little tip down here. And we'll pull that back. And we'll turn on our trail line visibility. And there you have it. We'll just say OK. And that is your animation. So now that we've got an animation done, now we can once again go to this file, new drawing from animation, and instead of making it an assembly view, it's going to do the exploded view drawing. It does take it a minute or two. It has to think about what it's creating. It takes it a bit longer than a traditional drawing, but it will come up with time. Um, and here we go. Now, to me, that looks a little small for the size of paper that I'm using. So I'll increase my scale up to a 2 to 1. 
Try that out. My keyboard's been acting funny today. There we go. And that looks like it fills the paper pretty well. So I'll go ahead and place that there. Say OK. Now we're almost done. All we need now is a little parts list. So to do that, it's very simple. Up here at tables, there's there's the auto table and the custom table. Really, honestly, either one of those or parts list, they're probably all going to be about the same. But I'm in the habit of using the auto table. So I'll just do table. I'll place it up in the corner where it's not going to interfere with my drawing. So I think this corner is naturally the place to do it. And look, it automatically balloons our parts for us. The balloons are the little little circled numbers with arrows coming from them. Okay. I like to make sure that the arrows are pointing at the middle of the part. They like to point at the t tip of the part. I, I'm not sure if there is a right or wrong way, but I think that looks nicer. Okay. You can also move the move the balloons around with the little green dots if you need to. There you go. Now, I think it's obvious, but maybe it's not. If your material doesn't show up as the correct material, what you would need to do is you would need to go into that design. This is the animation. So we would go back to the, the, the to the design and you could now right click on the correct component and choose the correct material for such such that component. For the corresponding component is the right way to say that. Hopefully this video was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions.